We are light. But there are different kinds of light. As we spoke about in the class last night, there is the gross level of light, the kind coming out of these bulbs, photonic light. And there is subtle light, the light of an angel, the light that you would have in your dreams, the light that you will experience in deep meditation or luminosity from within. Those subtle kinds of light aren't made of photons. They don't have a source in the physical plane. But that light is even more real than these lights. It's more subtle, but more real, more powerful, more effective in touching the core of our being. And then beyond that, there is the supreme light, the light that is the very source of all that is this entire universe. And so when you break down everything, go through its gross outer shells, you will find at the core of every object is light. But within a human being, if you can penetrate through the shell of the ego, you will find not only the photonic light, as you will with these objects, but you will find the angelic light. And then within that, the supreme light. And once that supreme light is touched and its radiance is allowed to move into this phenomenal plane, then everything is different. Everything is seen from the light of God as the emanation of God. So our very perception changes. This is why Aldous Huxley titled his famous book, The Doors of Perception. The door is here. It's really a window, but it has to be opened by seeing from that supreme self, not from the outer false self of the ego that can only see the gross light. And so when we look at one another, not as bodily beings, but as soul to soul, and then deeper than that as spirit, then the light that is God consciousness emerges and breaks through the defense mechanisms of the ego. And if we sit in that light long enough, it will dissolve all by itself, the entire structure of the ego, and liberate our essential, immortal, eternal self into its full presence potentiality and so we are giving rebirth on this plane to what had become latent and hidden and obscured we are allowing it to re-emerge and in the doing of that this plane itself is transformed this world is transformed In order for that light to emerge, we must remove the outer covering, and the outer covering is made of language. The language covers over and obscures the silence in which the light is contained and emerges. The silence is the the medium of the light. When we cultivate the inner silence, then we create a space in which the light can shine. And eventually we realize that it makes more sense to live in the silence, not just 
be in silence for 40 minutes a day or even less, but to live entirely in the silence. And that's when life becomes effortless because it is egoless. And the ego is the resistance to life and to the radiance of the inner light. So when we are in the inner silence and the solitude of the self, then there is clarity. The light itself brings the clarity as to how the body-mind should proceed through space and time. But the center of gravity or the center of one's being is no longer in the phenomenal plane of space and time, but transcendent of that. And we recognize that the self is not an individual self, but is the cosmic self, the creator. And so we can rest in that divine presence. And when we do that, then all questions end, all suffering ends, all the tribulations of egoic life end. And we realize that all those tribulations had only one purpose, which is to bring us inward in order to have the realization of the supreme grace grace is ours at any moment simply by turning the mind inward simply by desiring it deeply enough to be willing to enter into the silence and so this path is ultimately utterly simple Mm -hmm.